everybody two streams in a row well today's topic was a hot one so i said well, i gotta make time for this so i did um i made time to be here with you guys it's a, always a pleasure and an honor to be with you guys um <laughs> i'm just talking on my phone now some of the comments here on youtube are hilarious well this song is very catchy Actually, you know, I hated the song when I first heard it. Um, just actually shout out to JP. He's the one who actually picked the song out one time. Um, it was for a debate that we had with a dude named Daniel, um, who's an atheist. And he said, we'll get, we'll get him off his mark if we put this song because atheists hate the song. Um, so now I just keep the song because it's stuck in my head and I want it stuck in your head too. So... It may be uh, I have a love-hate relationship with that intro, and so should you guys. You should definitely have a love-hate relationship with that hit intro. <laughs> Not going to lie, right? That intro, it just gets, it worms into your head, and that's it. You know, simple message, but true. Jesus is our friend, and I have a friend in God. Um, yeah, let's get started with prayer. We have some. We have a whole trailer to unpack tonight. Um it's about Hillsong Church. So uh, we're going to go watch the trailer together. I will stop at a certain moment to make some comments, drop some Bible, make some more comments, maybe drop some more Bible, and you guys will get essentially my thoughts on the whole Hillsong Church Exposed documentary, uh, which is crazy. Just crazy, like. A documentary that was if you would tell me that there'll be a documentary on Hillsong Exposed that will show up in a on a television network like Discovery, you I would I would have said there's no way. Like I said, maybe Lifetime, because Lifetime be dropping like Christmas movies and those Christmas things. I'd be like, okay, maybe Lifetime. Uh, but Discovery, it was I I was surprised. And we'll talk about it, we'll we'll explore it for a little bit. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you, ask you that you may guide our conversation, that you may guide our time here in fellowship, that you may look at this video and critique the video uh, from a place of love and understanding, but also from a place of standing firm for your word and, and standing firm in your righteousness, Jesus. Uh, we know, Father God, that you, you, make, you make us righteous. Um, it is by your blood that we are righteous, Jesus. It is by your spirit that we are able to follow you. So we ask you, Father God, to give us a grace and mercy in everything that we do. 
But we also ask you, God, to, for, to give us the ability to judge what others do by their fruits. Uh, you said we shall know them by their fruits. You said that we should, we should, you said that we should be able to discern between spirits. So let us use this time period to watch, to see how the world views uh, Hillsong Church and how the world views these discrepancies that have happened in that, in that church organization. Because the world sees it as much as the Christian community. And sometimes we forget as Christians that there are people who have their eyeballs on these things, that have a pulse on these things. And when they see a, a failure from one part of, of the Christian world, they kind of conclude it as a failure to the whole entire uh, faith. So I pray, Father God, that people may understand why they may be failures, why they were failures in the Christian, in the song of Hillsong Church. And how those failures do not correlate with the Christian faith or the Christian walk, but instead that we may be able to look at this objectively and understand where their shortcomings come from. In your name we pray, amen and amen. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into it, right? Um, I was shocked that Discovery Plus was doing it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Discovery Plus, let me tell you something. In this day and age, everybody has their own streaming site, and Discovery has to try to, like, they're kind of late to the game. Like, why would I pay $4.99 for Discovery Plus when there's already Netflix, Hulu, um, all these other, all these other stuff that people pay money to do? And, you know, $5 a month, that's 60 bucks a year. Um, I don't believe, and Discovery has to, Go and cater to somebody. So when I saw this documentary, I was like, you know what? I would want to watch this documentary. And it was a three. And what I learned about the documentary is that it's a three-part series that they're gonna drop in March. And I was like, oh man, where am I willing to pay five dollars uh, for just a month of March just so I can see this documentary? Because I really want to see what the perspective of people from the world have it. Like, I think that's one thing It's very clear when you talk to a person of the faith and you kind of do an echo chamber in terms of like what our ideas and what our perspectives are on certain topics. But to hear what somebody from the world is saying about uh, people for about a church, uh, it's different, right? It's a different perspective. Especially when we're, we're trying to evangelize and win souls um, and, to, and to preach to the world, um, it's important to know sometimes what the world says about us. Actually, in fact, Jesus, this probably, I, this verse, I didn't intend to use this verse, but Jesus asked his disciples, uh, Who do you say I am? And actually, again, I wasn't planning to use this verse. Obviously, like, as I speak, the spirit is guiding me in this. But if we go to Matthew chapter 16, right? Jesus asks his disciples this question. Uh, Matthew 16, we're going to be reading the ESV really quickly. Just before we get started, people are like, just get to the video already. This is the intro. It's the intro. It's the intro. 16 verse uh, 13, uh, it says, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciple, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? So we see that the perspective of who do we view Jesus is different from the perspective of what the world views Jesus. Or even the perspective of how we view the church is different from the perspective of how the church is viewed by the world. I mean, the perspective of how we view church is different from the perspective of how the world views the church. And obviously, there are certain things that the world will not understand about the faith because they do not have the Holy Spirit, right? So certain things... Certain understandings are made clear to them because of their lack of Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit teaches us about these things. So it's impossible to grasp and to fully understand without the Holy Spirit. But it's also important to note when we, to realize 
sometimes why the world view things as weird. Um, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be. I'm not surprised. I like to hear actually the perspective of people who are of the faith, because sometimes it makes you wonder and, and, and consider what are the things that we may do that may be just tradition. Um, and what are the things that we do that are biblical? And sometimes, especially in, in our home churches, if you go to like a mom pa church, there are a lot of things that we may do that may be tradition and not biblical. And if somebody were to ask you, hey, why do you guys do that? Um, you wouldn't be able to give an actual biblical answer or biblical backing for why that's being done. Uh, no, Brother JP is alive and well. If Brother JP was had passed away, I would have definitely have mentioned it on, uh, on YouTube. But Brother JP is just taking time off from YouTube right now. Um, if you want to catch him, he has a Discord that he that he shamelessly plugs, and he's mostly on that. And the last thing I will say about that is that he will come back to YouTube with street preaching content. So the next time you'll see JP, he will be back to doing street preaching, which should be soon because today was about fifty to sixty degrees in New York City. It was warm. That's warm for New York City. Um, 50 to 60 degrees in New York City. And it's going to be 60 to 59 degrees tomorrow. I was, I, I actually went in a hoodie, but I was like, man, I could have gone outside in a short, in a short sleeve shirt. Uh, so it is beautiful and gorgeous right now in New York City. And it feels like spring is here, which I'm glad because I do not like the winter. It is my least favorite month. All right. Enough about me. That's the intro. Let's get into the video. So the video isn't the entire show. As I mentioned before, the show is going to be shown on in this. It was 16 Massachusetts. Beautiful. Love it. Um, the show was. Uh, the show was is going to be shown on March 24th. It's going to be a three part documentary, which is pretty good. Uh, and it's going to they only should put out the trailer to tease you. The trailer, but the trailer shows enough. I saw the trailer before just to get ready. I just saw it really quickly to see uh, what points I wanted to talk about. And I'm going to tell you that the trailer itself gives enough. So let's, all right, without further ado, let us look at this trailer. All righty, share my screen. Discovery Plus Originals. Let's see it. For those that are wondering why they're showing Australia, Hillsong Church originated in Australia with Pastor Brian Houston uh, or Houston, whatever, however way he mentions his name. So the church started in Australia and they have many, many churches in major cities in around the world. Uh, so they have a Hillsong in London, I believe so. They have a Hillsong in New York City. They have a Hillsong in Los Angeles. In many major cities, they have Hillsong. Have you ever heard of Hillsong Church? Hillsong is the celebrity church, right? Bieber, Bono, Vanessa Hutchins, Kevin Durant. It wasn't just... So really quickly, as, as we watch this, right, it's very clear that people quickly associated the Hillsong Church with the celebrities that went to Hillsong. Uh... One of the things that Hillsong has always been accused of is creating a culture of celebrity status, a culture of concert status. They try to make make church feel like a concert. And that obviously attracted a lot of people who were wanting to go to seeker friendly churches. Um, and it attracted many people who are worldly stars like Vanessa Hudgens, Kevin Durant. Uh, most notably Justin Bieber, because he's the one that's most closely associated with a pastor from New York that went to Hillsong. They used to be the pastor of Hillsong named Carl Lentz, who ultimately gave up his position, if you don't know about Carl Lentz, because of a marital infidelity that he had with a woman that was not even of the faith. I believe she's a Muslim woman. She actually, I remember in her interview she said she didn't even know who Carl Lentz was um so it was just he did it he had an affair with somebody who wasn't of the faith at all um he did it while being married 
this Australian startup anymore. It was Justin Bieber's turn. There's Carl Lentz. Um, that's got to be the coolest ex-pastor of all time, uh, showing off the guns, showing off the abs, uh, clearly in great shape. Pastor Carl Lenz, walking around shirtless with Justin Bieber. <laughs> I mean, and that's why just, Carl Lenz was known as the hipster pastor, right? He was this guy, he, he was that guy, like this super cool hipster pastor. Um, and he kept that person, he kept that, that notion for years. For example, he was on shows like Ellen DeGeneres and he was asked questions very, very straight up. Do you believe, what do you believe about homosexuality and homosexuality and the Bible? And he said, you know, that's up to God to decide, dodging the question. Uh, one of the things, one of the biggest red flags, I would say, for a pastor um, is when they dodge questions in turn and don't try to give a biblical answer uh, because they want to appear as accepting of people's of people's sin. That's something that's a huge red flag. Now, some people may say this is a humongous red flag. I honestly don't know the context of this. Was he at the beach? Because if I'm at the beach, my shirt's coming off. Like I'm just at the beach, so I don't know the context of this picture. And I know that being around with a celebrity, because they're going to take pictures of you. Um, now, should he have been, and I know that they were very good friends. Uh, but, you know, when you have, when you are high profile like this, um, it's not necessarily a good thing. In fact, the Bible tells us and encourages us to live quiet lives, right? For this very reason, right? Because these lives that are always on air, constantly are being ridiculed. Let's continue. They've had over 3 billion views on YouTube. Hillsong changed the way that... Hillsong Church operated like a nightclub with VIP treatment. Uh, so this, again, was one of the major complaints about Hillsong, that it operated like a nightclub, felt like VIP treatment, felt like a club, felt like a party. And again, this is something that happens with a lot of seeker-friendly churches. Now, I'm not saying for you not to have evangelistic services and have services where you're going to intentionally be preaching to people who may not know Christ or, or services where the message may be skewered to those people. I'm not saying that's not, that's not saying there's nothing wrong with that. But what happens is in churches that are seeker friendly, all the messages are skewered towards uh, people who are not saved. And actually, one thing that people don't seem to remember is the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 28 is to go out and create and form disciples, right? To be a disciple means to be a follower. To be a disciple means that you have to have a deeper knowledge, right? You're not just on the sidelines and, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but you are stepping your toes into what's going on. So if you're constantly having a nightclub environment, and I, I, I'm not here condoning or saying a nightclub environment is okay for a church, but if you constantly have one sort of environment where you're calling yourself seeker friendly, then how, when and how are you creating people who are disciples? When are you creating, when are you allowing for members to grow deeper roots in Christ? The fact is you're never allowing for members to grow deeper roots in Christ. Um, and we know what happens when someone doesn't build deep roots in the faith, what happens is, is that they get sown, that they get chewed up. Uh, they get scorned by the earth's sun. Uh, they, they wither away. Um, the only way a Christian is able to actually uh, go and live in the faith is if a Christian has deep roots, right? Because oftentimes deep roots reach down to water, to wells of water. Um, and if we look and if we know what the Bible tells us about what living water is, living water is oftentimes associated with the Holy Spirit. So the, so churches which have churches that create disciples are churches that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's continue. Many of us saw how church could be done. They're huge now. They're huge. You can make a real change if you come to your song. This is going to be change if you come to your song. Yeah. This will make a real change. Ah. All right, give me one second. I want you guys to, to see this portion right here. Imagine an unfailing love, 
oftentimes churches that are, are like Hillsong focus only on God's love. Um, they don't focus on any other the attributes of God, right? Well, churches like Hillsong will speak only about the things that God can do for us. Well, this is God's unfailing love. This is God. God will take you out of your situation. God will do this. It never speaks about any of the any of the responsibility to maintain oneself in the faith or any of the uh or the joys and pleasure of being a servant of Christ. It speaks only about what God can do for you. Oftentimes it's viewed almost like a genie, right? Like what is the genie going to do for me? What is God going to do for me? Um it's oftentimes what their messages are about. Um most of the times churches like this they have motivational speaker messages. A motivational speaker message it can be defined or can be viewed as as a message that you use the word as a jumping point for your overall message. So I'm going to have this one verse. I'm going to take this one verse out of context first and foremost. I'm not going to even give you the context of the verse, but I'm just going to necess- I'm just going to use it as my jumping point to tell you how can you God can how can you better yourself through God. You can make a real change if you come to Hillsong. This was going to be a place where I could call my home. But that clearly wasn't the case. And it almost took my life. You can run home so it says money making machine, church it with 20 million in damages for immoral something. Um, parishioners have given a near experience. Ooh, I can't read that. They're trying to save it. They're trying to get my five ninety nine and they the, for my four ninety nine and they might get it. I'm interested. That's Carl Lentz. That's the pastor. Uh, maybe you didn't recognize him with his shirt on, but that is pastor. That is former pastor Carl Lentz. And I'm not trying to be petty. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you the facts as I see as I see them. When we talk about Carl and purity. How could you shame me when I was so young, but you did this? And that reach actually reaches to my second verse, right? Um, the verse the Bible tells us uh, about what we should look like in an overseer. I'm going to stop sharing for a second, just so I can, I can uh, you guys can see my face in full. So if we go to... We're going to talk about the qualifications of overseers. That's First Timothy chapter three, verses verse two to three. First Timothy chapter three, verses two to three. Uh, righty, check out the ESV. I'm going to share my screen with y'all, homies. Share screen. Two, two, two. First Timothy chapter three. All right. It says, therefore, an overseer must be above reproach. Uh, guys. Say that uh, let's say that again. Actually, the verse before that, when when uh, Paul actually commends anybody that wants to be an overseer, anybody looking for the precision of an overseer, he's saying that's a good thing. It's a great thing to want to be an overseer. Uh, but he says the overseer must be above reproach. Husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. Above reproach. What does above reproach mean? It means that nobody can find flaws or fault in you. You're not saying that you're perfect because no man is perfect. Um, Only God is perfect. We know this. But we're talking about reproach from a moral perspective. You see, when a pastor, pastors have the moral obligation to a pray for their congregation, pastors have the moral obligation to uh, speak to their congregation. Pastors have the moral com- uh, the moral obligation uh, to actually be there for the congregation and to co- reprimand the congregation when they did wrong. But it's really hard to reprimand somebody when you're doing the same thing. It's it's really hard. It takes a certain level of brassness. It takes a certain level of deceitfulness. It takes a certain level of, of high ego, to be honest with you. 
uh, Carl Lentz is, was reprimanding the girl for doing wrong, which we all, she was talking about sexual immorality. Uh, she was talking about being a young believer. Uh, when he was doing something as a mature person, that's why we are, our, our leadership is so supposed to be beyond reproach. And that's why when I talk about people who are pastors, I speak very, I, I try to hold the standard to be very high for them because the Bible makes it clear that the standards of a pastor are supposed to be extremely high. Why? Because as much as we are not supposed to, as young Christians in particular, put their eyes on the pastor. Uh, because uh, people want to model themselves after their pastor. They, they say, you know what? My pastor does things a certain way. Even they may not even notice that they're doing it. Um, I've seen people, uh, I'll speak specifically for my church. Um, but the pastor that I that I, I am under, he's a great orator of the word. And a lot of the people who sometimes they some people put some people to preach. And what they try to do, the first thing they want to do is they want to emulate how he preaches. Even to the point that I've spoken to some of them, like, hey, you're going to have to find your own style of preaching. You can't preach in the manner that he preaching. You don't have that grace to preach in the way that he preached. You can't go and take the person's uh, catchphrases. Um, you can't just go be like, well, that's how my, or take that person's mannerisms of speaking. Uh, you have to find your own way. But there's so many people that emulate and look up to a pastor. So if a leader, if a pastor, if a shepherd of the flock, if an elder um, was to fall into moral, uh, moral um, uh, morality, it takes out a lot of people. It hurts a lot of people. Um, it's, it destroys the lives of a lot of people. We, that's why we have to be, that's why people who are pastors have to be, have a, a difficult situation. It's a good thing. The Bible says, uh, but that's also why Paul says, I, I don't encourage many of you to be pastors. I don't encourage many of you to be elders. I don't encourage you, many of you to be overseers because too much is given much is required. It, there is a certain level of expectation that falls on to you if that's what you want to do. And yeah, I get it. Because it's the most outwardly part of the, bo the body, uh, the, the part that's most recognizable is the pastor. Uh, many people uh, want to get, have that position, but it's the position that I would say I, oftentimes uh, the Bible tells us not many of us should strive to be it. Not many of us should look to do it. Because there's a, a certain level of requirements and those requirements aren't asked of if the person's an usher. Uh, you can't hold, I, I always tell this to, to my friends, I don't hold the worship leader to the same regard as I hold the, 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 the lead pastor, the head pastor, uh, or the associate pastor or the elder. I don't. I understand why some people would or why some people might say, hey, these people need to be held to accountability. Yes, 100%, they need to be held to an accountability, but it's nowhere near the same as an elder. The elder, Paul specifically call, tells Timothy, hey, this is what you need to be following. All right, let's jump right in. Do, do, do. Let's jump right in. Let's continue with this video. People are like, Jonathan, just get back to the video. Sorry. Sorry, guys. It was the most toxic thing I have. This is the craziest part right here. This is how Discovery Plus, Discovery Plus is going to get my $4.99. They're going to get $4.99 for me. You know, this lady that is speaking right now is the mistress of Carl Lentz. This, I don't know what type of bag Discovery Plus gave. I don't know what type of money Discovery Plus has, but they gave this woman the bag because this woman is out here spilling the beans. That to me, when I saw that part, I was like, oh, they did not just do that. This is the mistress. This is not a good flattering light of her. Like, I caught her at a wrong angle. But this is her. I had to deal with uh, Hey, girl. And she's out here dropping. She's out here dropping video, uh, uh, personal videos that he's sending her. Man, the Bible tells us that all things come to the light. The Bible does not lie. Wow. They brought her on 
And she just said, yeah, I'm going to spill all the tea. All the tea I am going to spill. I am not going to leave any tea not spilled. That part was crazy. So every Pastor Carlin's alleged lover tells all I was a drug to him. Um, yeah. Um, he found an out. Um, he found a situation. He found a girl that didn't know who he was. Um, and he was attracted to. He pursued her. Um, he sent her video. She was not a one a, an accident. She not wasn't a one time thing. It was a, a legitimately affair. Right, right here we can read the celebrity pastor had been married for seventeen years to his wife. Saw his world of fame and renown come to crashing halt earlier this year when it was discovered that he had been having an affair. This is why we also have to be able to pray for our pastors. Because pastor, because the enemy will always try to try to knock down a pastor. Now, I'm not saying that Carl Lentz was an incredible pastor, a good pastor. I honestly think I've heard only one Carl Lentz. I know I've never heard a Carl Lentz preaching before. I've never heard him. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because that's what I'm called to do. But what I would say is that he, along the way, messed up. And what happens is when you're in a position, the position like that, uh, there's room for error, but there's not that much room for error. And that's what he learned. And that's and the one thing I will commend him to that he did, and I really do commend him for doing this. Uh, so this doesn't all sound negative. This doesn't all sound like, hey, uh, Jonathan, you're bullying him. The one thing that I will commend him is that he left his church. He, he stepped down from the church and he moved away to the opposite coast. And after moving away from the opposite coast, he tried he reconciliated with his wife to the to the best of my knowledge. And after doing all of that, he has not stepped back onto the podium. You see, he understands the severity of what of, of what was required of him as an overseer. He understands that he is not something where he can go back and go back to the podium six weeks later. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I, I did a live stream about the pastor and venue church. Who said, you know what? I am, I was caught with my secretary or whatever, and we were naked because uh, we got chili dog on us. This was a real lie that he said he, when they were asking him about why was he in a towel and his secretary and his secretary, his and why his secretary was naked, and, and the churches found him when they tried to surprise him in his house. And he's like, you know, we, we had chili dog and those chili dogs get messy. You know, it happens to the best of us. No, Carlin's caught, went and decided to say, you know what? I'm going to step down. Another person that honestly, if I'm going to be honest with you, that, that should have stepped down and for whatever reason, uh, they don't allow him to step down is, oh, what's the dude in uh, Joel Osteen's church? I forgot, his, I forgot his name. I forgot what the dude's name. Oh, uh, Gray, uh, whatever Gray, Pastor Gray. That man, a man has cheated multiple times. Um, and yes, he's reconciled for whatever he and his wife are reconciled, but that doesn't mean that he just gets to go back onto the podium like that. And I don't know if you guys may think that I'm being harsh, but I'm telling you that there's a certain level and certain standard that we have to expect from our pastors. Uh, and that's why I said that we have to pray for our pastor because the enemy will use any angles to try to come for a pastor. All right, let's keep watching. And this is crazy. She just literally said, I'm going to come out, I'm going to get the bag, and I'm going to go on to this show. You got to put you down. The beliefs that they put in you go, go deep. deep. They really yeah. get in your head. This is cool church. church. There is a fine line between cult and culture. They want to spread attention to the as they can. Cult and culture. Hillsong sells out Madison Square Garden for 2014 NYC conference. Thousands to gather under no other name. Judah Smith to join Hillsong senior pastor Brian and Bobby Houston, Carl Lentz. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have a very cult-like following, right? And it's and they have a humongous, humongous, they have a lot of pressure in their church community. I can believe that. I don't know much about it, but I'm pretty sure once I watch this 
Discovery Plus documentary for four ninety nine. I'm sounding like a promotion. I promise you, I am not being sponsored by Discovery Plus. I really am not. I'm not. I'm gonna stop. I'm actually gonna stop saying four ninety nine because you're gonna think that I am literally a promotion and I'm not. I really do believe that they need to conquer Earth in order to make heaven on Earth. To so essentially bring on the end times. This is not a moral failure. Uh, I've heard about that before. Uh, because the belief, because obviously Jesus Christ will come back uh, when all have heard about his name. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. We can't, I don't, I, I'm a personal belief that we cannot speed up the coming of Christ. The coming of Christ is, has been put at a set time. Um, and we don't know what that time is or when will it be. Um, and it, it, there's no sense in us predicting it. But it's a sense for it's something that we should know so that we may be prepared uh, for when it happens, but also that we may live our lives uh, to the best of our abilities because it's out of our control. You know what I mean? Like whether I do this, do what I do A or what I do B is not. I can't bring about the end that the Jesus is coming any faster. What I can do is I can do the. I can control the situation, the places that I'm in. And be the best ambassador of Christ that I can be in the places that I God has put me. And when I mean places that God has put me, I mean out specifically outside of the church. And this right here is talking about uh, Brian Houston had a cover up for his dad, Frank Houston, who was allegedly well. I think it's factual now. I think I think it's, he's been convicted or whatever, um, molesting young girls. So yeah. It's a felonious criminal act. $78 million in revenue, tax rate, manipulation, religious trauma, systemic cover-up, tremendous power. Everything in your life is full song. This is not what I thought it was. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. That's the end of the trailer. That's a lot. That's a lot, right? So really, what are our takeaways from this trailer? Um, we see that Hillsong has oftentimes made things about themselves and not made things about God. You can tell from the way they're speaking. Well, this is a cult. This is something where uh, we want they want their, their influence everywhere. This is something where uh, you can't freely come and go as you please. Uh, there's a fine line. Yeah, people like that line. There's a fine line between cult and culture. People love that line. Um, there, a lot of the stuff that we're see, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing is is eggs coming to, what? Is, how do you say, it? eggs coming to hatch? I believe is the saying. I may be wrong. I may be off with my with my sayings, but it's the it's the fact of the matter that the what happens in the dark comes to light there's a there's a bible verse that I, that i'm reminded of um there's a bible verse that i'm reminded of uh that talks about first timothy chapter sorry matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16 matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16 and it talks about you us being a city on a hill and the context of this is jesus had just finished uh, he's doing his preachings of the Beatitudes. Uh, we read the full chapter. We see that he does a sermon on the mound. The be and this is all part of the same uh, teaching slash preaching. Some people say that this is the greatest preaching slash teaching of all time. You know, I, I'm not going to be one to disagree with that. Um, but here, I know some people get triggered by the NIV, so... Oh, actually, I'm not even streaming. I'm not even sharing my screen. I, I, I was a fool there. I wasn't even sharing my screen. Matthew chapter 16. Oh, oh, am I the wrong, right thing? Nope, I am not. I shared the wrong thing. Everybody's making fun of me. And it's okay. It's okay. Matthew, everybody knows that, that the Beatitudes is Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to change the version uh, from the NIV, which I know is very triggering, and I don't want anybody to be triggered by the version that I'm using. 
Um, so I'm going to switch it to the, my favorite version, which is the NSV. Uh, and it says, this is the Beatitudes, as I mentioned before. Jesus is in the middle of, of the, preaching the greatest sermon of all time, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And verse 14 through 16, it says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, nor people light a lamp and put it on the basket, put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. A couple of things that we see here. Our good works should glorify our Father in heaven. That means that everything that we do should glorify who God is. When the Bible says that we are sitting in the hill, that means that the world has us under a microscope as a church. So really the actions of what happened in Hill Songs, uh, the actions of what happened in Hill Song really affects the church in general um, because it makes the entire church look bad, unfortunately. Even if we disagree with Hill Song, even if we, um, even if obviously we, we don't necessarily don't adhere to their teachings, uh, it makes the church look bad. In some way, shape, or form, the church took a body blow. So we have to recognize stuff like that. We have to recognize that our that we, when we say, when we tell people that we are Christian, uh, even people who are not of the faith have an expectation to what that means, to what it means to be Christian. Uh, so pe people have a certain understanding of what Christian means. So if you tell somebody you're Christian, it puts you on this situation where people will view you um, and say, hey, uh, you shouldn't do that because you're Christian. And it's because as Tahisha Tahisha is saying, I said Tahisha, right? That's right. They identify as Christian. So we have to make sure that in our own walks, we have to be the best ambassadors of Christ. Now, if I mentioned, I think I've mentioned this before about why I love when the Bible calls us ambassadors. Because if you know anything about an ambassador, an ambassador is a representative, a representative of a country, uh, and they go off to far lands and they represent the, represent their people in those far lands. Well, we are ambassadors of Christ, so we know that this earth is our temporary home, but it's not our eternal or final home. So while we're in this earth, we have to be the best representative of Christ on this earth. We have to. We can't sit there and make excuses. We can't sit there and make Christ look bad because we represent Christ. So our actions are a reflection on how people may view Christianity in general. How many people have said, man, I, this is why I'm not a Christian. And I'm pretty sure there's mad people who are going to watch that Discovery documentary and be like, you see, that's why I don't go to church. Because when I go to church, it makes it's a cult. And when I go to church... They're trying to take money. And when I go to church, you see that the pastor's doing a whole bunch of stuff. And the pastor's not even living right. But he's telling me to live a specific way. And it's damaging to the body of Christ. This honestly is a way for people. And it gives people an out when they're confronted between or the question of will they give their life to Christ? Yeah, people will say, well, I am a Christian, but I don't go to church or I don't follow a specific church. Because all pastors are corrupt. And that's the sad part about it. That they it, it, it destroys the hard work of hundreds and thousands of pastors. Something that I keep in mind. Um, something that I keep in mind. It's a saying. Um, uh, it's a saying. And I want you guys to keep this in mind. A good reputation is built up in years but can be destroyed in 15 minutes. So it's much easier to destroy a good reputation a good, a good reputation than it is to build a good reputation. To build a good reputation, you have to build trust. You have to go and decide and, and reach out to people. You have to go and make sure and, and really show people that you care. And, and it's hard because honestly, people generally have their guard up. They'd be like, yo, who are you? I don't trust you. You're the church or you're this or you're that or you're... You're a person that say you're Christian. I don't trust you. So it's hard. But everything that can, every all the work that we, you do, that we do, that uh, we're working to can be destroyed 
in 15 minutes, in 10 minutes, in five minutes, in a saying, in a word. Um, there's people who build their whole, their whole like livelihood, and they've said and they've been caught on camera saying something inappropriate, and boop boop, all people view them in a completely different way. So what does that mean? It means we have to be able to guard our testimony to the best of our abilities. Obviously, in Hillsong, they got sloppy. They got into a situation in a position where they could not oversee everything that they were doing. Uh, they got to, maybe they started with the best of intentions, but it is impossible for a pastor, a pastor in Australia, to be able to connect to a pastor in New York, in New York, in London, in Los Angeles, and keep tabs on what they are doing. It is impossible. For it is impossible to have as much of an influence as they thought that they could have an influence. But that's why the glory to God that we, that God uh, says that the work is many is work is many, but the 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 workers are few. But just because though, and, and I encourage us to do in, in our little section of the world, in our little place in the world, in our little spot in the world, to understand that there's a lot of work for us to do there, and a lot of space for us to do it. Because what happens is that when we allow for one group or one people to do it, then that's people say, well, they are the be all end all for Christianity and they are not. So wherever little space you are in your world, whatever little influence you have in your world, be an ambassador there. Uh, be your local church there. Uh, that is what we want you to do. That is what I want anybody to do. And that being said, what is the motive of this, of this uh, documentary? Uh, to shame Christians, uh, my, friend, my friend Kevin said, man, this is a body blow for, for Christianity everywhere. But to shame Christians, it's, it's an attack of the enemy. Um, it's an attack of the enemy that, that unfortunately comes because that he's allowed to do because one church is, it was messing up. But it, it really is an attack of the enemy. 100%. Christians are always monitored by non-Christians to see if they're real or not. Let's see if there's anybody else. So I am done with my portion of the conversation. I've been speaking for 47 minutes, actually 45, because, you know, my intro is two minutes long. So I've been speaking for 45 minutes. Are there any questions concerns i know i was lagging at a certain point because i saw my my thing go, drop down to to like one uh but are there any questions concerns uh comments that you guys want and i can highlight some of these Let's see i'm gonna take us some time yes yes ma'am chili dogs i would never have chili dogs especially with another sister Never get chili dogs. Getting people in trouble. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 just, I'm not an OS. I don't believe in in OSAS. Um, but I do know that this is not all relevant for all people who are OSAS. I would give because I, I have friends who are OSAS. They're, they're. This is an extreme. This is hyper Calvinism. This is hyper. This is hyper grace. Uh, this is, these are the same people that will preach that somebody can do almost anything, um, and still be saved. Well, the problem with that is, as we've spoken about before, is if your life is not bearing spiritual fruit, uh, you clearly, uh, are not saved. Like you don't, not, you don't go and rape someone and then still claim you're Christian. Why do I say that? Because Rape is forceful. Hey, first of all, rape is forceful. Uh, rape is sexual immorality at the, as well. And also, at the end of the day, um, there's nothing. You're not. You're doing something. You're 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 damaging somebody else, right? So you are not showing any fruits of the spirits if you go around raping somebody. So one hundred percent. Ha, ah, is Marcus Rogers a Christian? Um, there's people that will say no. 
Uh, I would say I think I would lean to no because he's a teacher of uh, the he's a teacher of the oneness gospel or oh, not gospel sorry the oneness theology doctrine and he has been given many opportunities to repent from it. Like I think that somebody can be part of can believe in oneness out of in ignorance. But I start to question whether somebody's a Christian if they choose to believe in oneness, even though multiple people have spoken to this person. Because at that point, you are teaching a false doctrine, right? A false doctrine that, well, where we can agree or dis like there's certain things that we can agree and disagree on. Like if somebody believes in one saved, always saved, I, I would just respectfully disagree. I don't even necessarily have discussions or arguments about it. People want to have arguments with me. People be emailing me like, hey, how can you how can you not believe this? And I'm like, bro, I don't want to have an argument with this. At the end of the day, we're, we're brother and sister. It doesn't matter to me. But though it doesn't change how we view God, right? It doesn't change who God is. But the problem with oneness, with oneness is that oneness change who God is and how God chooses to manifest himself. Uh, and then the thing is also that oneness people don't believe that trinitarians are christians uh if you don't if you don't speak in tongues oneness people believe that you are not a christian uh so i think that a lot of times we as trinitarians we want to play nice with them but they don't necessarily want to play nice with us as much as uh marcus rogers uh says he does um he has never to to my notion and my idea uh has said uh, that one can be saved without being able to speak in tongues. And maybe, maybe he is slowly coming around to the truth. And you know, I think that I think that I'll be it'd be great if Marcus um uh, comes to the truth. I think that that'd be amazing. But I, I think this is the problem. He adds works to salvation because he believes that one has to be baptized in water and be baptized in the spirit, which is a thought, belief that oneness Pentecostals have. Yeah. So I lean hesitantly to no, but I will not say that definitively. I won't say, hey, he's not a Christian. I can't say that definitively. I know that some people might be disappointed in me for saying that. You see, Geno Jennings, another person that comes very aggressively. And Geno Jennings, make no mistake, believes Trinitarians are of the devil. Gino Jennings believe Trinitarians are believe in a schizophrenic God, uh, not schizophrenic, yeah, schizophrenic God, uh, right? Like if you've heard some of Gino Jennings' uh, attacks on oneness, it's never come from attack on Trinity, on tr Trinity. It never comes from love. Yeah, it's always a good question though. Do you watch Mark Christian channel? I think I, I think he popped up on my newsfeed one or two times. I caught a couple of things. I caught a couple of his stuff. I think that at the end of the day, anybody who's a Christian content creator of note eventually pops up on my newsfeed. I, I'm not my newsfeed. It's not my newsfeed. On my on my YouTube feed. So yes, I know who he is, and I've watched some of his stuff. But not all of his stuff for me to be like have a definitive conversation. But I assume he's a smart Christian guy. I know he's a dude. Yeah, I know he. I know he's. I know he's one save always saved. I know he's one save. He's. I, I know he's. I know that. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. No, one of some of the people that I I, I listen that uh, I do listen to, to is um, Mike Winger. Obviously, I, I I love me some Mike Winger. Um, nobody's even asking me this question. I'm just responding since we were on the the, the topic of channels. Uh, I do like listening a lot to what do you mean? Um, yeah, those type of people. What do you think of Smokey's channel? I don't. Unfortunately, I don't even listen to Smokey's channel anymore. I know there was a huge blowout with the whole smoky situation, so I decided to distance myself from that. 
not because of anything that, not because of any thought processes that I had about the situation, but necessarily that I didn't want to bring any drama necessarily onto this channel. Um, if you notice, that's part of the reason why I stay out of a lot of like these conflicts, because I think that at the end of the day, I don't believe that any, any of the conflicts that have come on onto our YouTube sphere have been very edifying. So generally what I try to do is I try, I try to avoid them and I don't bring them onto this channel. Yeah. Do, do, is it anybody else? Yeah, these, these are all great people. They're all great people. I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong. Like I, I do like, I do like a lot of people who are oneness, uh, not oneness, sorry, who are reformed and stuff. Like, I, I think that they're great biblical teachers. I think a lot of people who are reformed um, have a lot of biblical knowledge, and it's really, really great to see. God has given them a gift of biblical knowledge. Um, so I, I really do like to listen in on, and try to take the opinions of different people from different walks of life. But I do realize, recognize that being whether you're one saved, always saved, or whether you're an Armenian, um, I don't think that any you could. I don't think people necessarily shift their viewpoint. I think it's rare for someone to shift in their viewpoint from one saved, always saved. I think that once you have your position, you kind of have your position for life, and I think that that's something that we will find out in heaven. No, I haven't watched this person. Ask Cliff. I'll check him out. If you could ask Jesus one question, what would it be? Um, I would ask. I would ask, what other generation could I have gone? Could I have lived in and done well? Because I've always that's always the type of questions that I think about. I'm like, huh. What are the gener what are the time periods could I have lived in? Um, and it would have been okay. Like, I don't think it, for me being a person of color, I think it, I think my choices are kind of limited, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I know that's not a joke, but it's just the truth. Like, I think my choices would have been very limited on what type of time what type what time periods. Like, I definitely wouldn't want to be in the 1600s on on the in Western Africa. Definitely not. Uh, but I always wonder about what other time periods could I have been born in? Um, yeah. Yeah, right. That's 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 the type of like like what other time periods would my, would I have been able to have been born in, and how would my life have changed? Uh, and you know, like why was I born in the year twenty in the year in the nineties? Why was why was that selected? Why was I selected? Why not in the eighties? Or the seventies, you know. Yeah, I think so too. I really do think so. I think we're we're put in the time period where we can have the most effect in help in saving people. Obviously, God has a plan, um, and He carries out His plan. So, whatever whatever period time period that we were most that we most fulfill his plan or whatever feels fits his plan best is, you know, the time period he puts us in. But I always, I'm always curious. Like, you know, some people got born into the 60s. Some people were born into slavery. Like, you know, and that could have been myself. But God chose in his grace and his mercy to not let me be born into slavery. Um, so these are the things that I kind of think about. Uh okay. We have a we have a young Enoch here. And then myself was no more because God had taken him away or her away. I'm not sure about who myself is, what their sex is. Yeah, I do believe that this is the reason why. I, I really do believe this is the reason why. It, I think it depends on the fruits and uh, how can we be most effective? I just always find that interesting. 
Now I always imagine, hey, if I was born in the 1930s or the 1940s, what would I be doing, right? Like, how would I be doing? Like, what would I be doing? But I, man, if Jesus comes to me, I, I I will probably fall on my knees and say, Jesus, you are Lord. So that's probably what I would be doing. Because uh, obviously uh, the Bible says that his glory fills the throne room, right? So we his glory, like we're talking about of uh, Jesus uh, who is has entered into the glory that he had with God, with the Father. So Man, I don't know if, if I will even have the ability to ask questions. I actually saw this funny skit. Like, I don't know if you guys like The Simpsons, but I saw this something that was really, really funny to me. Uh, let me see if you guys find it funny, or maybe I just have weird humor, and you guys are going to be like, yeah, uh, you have weird humor. So give me one second. Let's see if you guys will find this funny. Uh... I thought it was hilarious. This is the Simpsons when they were, uh, uh, when they were funny. When the Simpsons in the nineties was untouchable. This, uh, I, I don't want to hype it up too much, but this to me was mad funny. All right, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share my screen. Y'all better laugh. All right, don't just laugh because I'm telling you to laugh. Just laugh. So it's the skit is called Protestant Heaven versus Catholic Heaven. So in this, uh, Marge like dies or whatever, and uh, she goes to Protestant Heaven, and then Homer and Bart will go to Catholic Heaven. After this Let's run on me. Hmm. Welcome, Welcome, Welcome to Protestant Devon. Devon. Room in one, hurrah! Poppy, have, have you seen Dash? Dash? Where's Homer and Bart? <gasps> heaven is us just like literally playing while yeah, Catholic heaven and now that opens up a whole discussion of will Catholics be in heaven uh, I'm not sure I think that Catholics who are I think that Catholics that truly love Jesus would eventually turn into Protestants uh, but if somebody is a Catholic and they truly love Jesus uh, <laughs> I do think that they can ultimately you know still get into heaven but I think it'll be more like squeaking by type thing yes i know you guys were laughing that was mad funny <laughs> i'll be like it's interesting to see how the world views us right like when we think about stuff like heaven and people are like yo heaven's gonna be like like the way i guess people view it they're like yo heaven's gonna be mad boring for them and, and then there's other depiction that yeah heaven's gonna be wild uh but man <laughs> yeah um, Josiah, so I did a whole lecture on angels. It's not necessarily that those messenger angels didn't look like the way people are depicting those angels. Those angels that you see are angels that you that uh, are viewed in uh, Revelation. Um, so we don't know to what extent uh, that was a imagery that uh, John was saying. Uh, and maybe Daniel has a similar vision or something different, but messenger angels don't look like that that round thing that you're speaking of with the eyeballs and stuff. That's not how messenger angels look like. Um, and that, how do you know that? 
Well, if you look at the two, if you look at what happened with uh with the two messengers, uh the the two messengers who went to Saddam and Gomorrah to destroy Saddam and Gomorrah, uh and walked with Jesus when he was talking to Abraham, Abraham was not necessarily afraid of them of those people, and actually even when even when they went to Saddam and Gomorrah, if you remember, um the men wanted to rape. No, that wasn't Saddam and Gomorrah. That was. Yeah, it was Saddam and Gomorrah. The men wanted to rape. They wanted to rape the angels. So, yeah. All right. I think that we have reached our limit. I'm just glad I gave Greg a good laugh. Uh, guys, I'm going to pray us out so that we can end this live stream. Thank you guys for joining. Um, if you guys enjoy this type of content, just share it with somebody that you know, somebody who you think would, might be interested and maybe blessed or edified by this video. That's all I ask um, is if you are found this edifying, just find somebody you might want to share this video with. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'm going to pray us out. Father God, we come before you. I thank you, Jesus, for having this for the, having this time period with you. I ask you, God, to continue to uh, make us ambassadors of you. Uh, allow us to continuously be uh, faithful to you, to continuously uh, seek your presence and seek to be uh, proper disciples, to build disciples, to look to not edify ourselves, but to play the background while you play the foreground, to make it all about you, Jesus, because that's what it is. That's what it always has been and always will be, because you share your glory with no other man. So I ask you, Jesus, to continue to help us Bless us and protect us. I thank you, Jesus, for our for the time here. I ask you, Jesus, to be with me uh, and be with every person on this on this live stream watching now or later on, Father God, that you may uh, allow them to align their heart's desire with what you want for them. So I thank you, Father God. I ask you for your spirit to lead us in prayer. And I ask you, Jesus, to continue to, to be with us. Because if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. In your name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you guys. Uh, yes, heaven is so cool. You got a new knit mind just to have it blown by its wonders. Amen. That's a great way to end it. Uh, God bless you guys. I am going to see. We're probably not going to go live again this week because I gave you two lives in the same week. But... I always enjoy to see you guys. I always love comparting with you guys. You guys are great. If you guys have anything that you'd like to share, uh, whether it's prayer, whether it's, um, oh, my email's not here. Uh, I'll share you my long email. If you, it's right here, supernaturallyempowered at gmail.com, and I'll write it in the comment sections. If you need to share anything, uh, with myself, supernaturally empowered at gmail.com. All right, blessings.